Dear learners, uh, my name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar Mistra, and I am working as an associate professor in one of the AKTU affiliated colleges. And my research areas are renewable energy in general and solar energy in particular. So, in this lecture, I am going to discuss with you about greenhouse dryers. In previous lectures, we have discussed uh, different types of dryers and why these dryers are required, uh, why drying is basically required. And to make you understand this topic, I have prepared a presentation which has been divided into the following contents. First, I'll give you the brief introduction about the different types of dryers and why drying is required basically, then solar drying. Then we'll discuss briefly about the various solar drying processes, solar drying techniques. Then we'll try to classify the different types of solar dryers and greenhouse dryer is one of that solar dryer which we discuss in detail in this uh, lecture. Then we are keep principle of greenhouse dryer, uh, principle card is the greenhouse effect and this greenhouse effect is the principle behind the uh, greenhouse dryers. Then we will discuss the classification of solar greenhouse dryers and advantages and disadvantages of the solar greenhouse dryers. So, these are the uh, contents uh, and on the basis of this contents, contents we will try to discuss about the greenhouse dryers. So, we'll, we all know uh, that food is a basic need of a human being after air and water for survival of their life. Food holds a key position in the development of any nation. The preservation of food for its oxygen availability has been in practice since the dawn of civilization and it is not a new practice. You know, One of the oldest methods of food preservation is the drying and storage because if you want to store your food for longer duration, then it must have some uh, limited uh, quantity of the moisture content. And if the moisture is uh, very high, then there is a spoilage of the food occurs. Uh, for that, drying is required. If these things we have already discussed in previous lectures. So, drying of a product is basically referred to as the removal of moisture from the product. Drying helps in reducing the moisture content of a product to a label below which deterioration does not occur. And we can uh, store our food for a different for a different period of time. Yes, it is okay that uh, the that period will be defined uh, by the different types of crops that uh, different period will, may be different for the different uh, food products. So, different food products have different level of safe moisture content at which the food product can be safely stored for a longer duration. And uh, this is a, a, a schematic diagram, a block diagram on the basis of that we can understand what we actually uh, do in the drying, drying process. A wet product will be there. Wet product means that dry product contained with the moisture and we blow some hot air inside that wet product and what does the hot air do? That hot air extract the heat content of that uh, product and we end with the dry product and the humidity or the moisture removed from that uh, wet product and we get the dry product and this dry product which have the, some uh, uh, basic level of moisture can be stored for a longer duration. Drying rates that is the how the fast or slow the drying of agriculture products are depends on few external and internal parameters. The ex external parameters may be uh, dry bulb temperature and dry bulb temperature is basically the actual air temperature measured by using a common thermometer bulb or thermocouple and relative humidity. Relative humidity is a one of the very important parameter. If you want to discuss the uh, this uh, uh, drying process, then relative humidity was, is one of the very basic parameter which is defined as the ratio of water vapor to the saturation vapor pressure at same temperature and is normally uh, expressed in percentage and the air velocity. Air velocity is also play a very important role in the uh, drying of any food or crop. Surface heat transfer coefficient is also very important external parameter which is a measure of overall heat transferability of a series of conductive and convective barriers. You know, uh, we have already discussed these things that drying is not a simple process. It's a, a complex phenomena. It's, it's a complex process. Uh, large number of uh, convective, conduct, conductive heat transfer phenomena takes place in the drying process. And some internal parameters are there like surface to volume ratio, which is the amount of the surface area per unit volume to an object. Surface temperature, surface temperature is the temperature at or near the surface. Specifically, it may refer to 
surface air temperature, the temperature of the air near to the surface of the earth basically and the rate of the moisture loss. Okay, how, how fast or how slow the moisture is, uh, is extracting from your food, from your wood product in composition. Uh, that is the moisture and fat. In wet product, what are the fractions of dry product and moisture? Is, if moisture will be more, then your product will take more time uh, uh, to dry. And various drying techniques have been developed in order to uh, preserve the agriculture food product or crops. Solar drying has proven to be one of the very important and widely used drying technology. We, we have already discussed the how this solar drying uh, is, uh, is, is becoming one of the very important drying technology. The application of solar energy in food processing industry is mainly limited to drying operations. Application of the solar energy, a lot of applications are also there. But in food industry, the solar energy is, has limited application in the drying industry. Solar vegetables, fruit dryers operating below 55 degrees Celsius are used for the purposes. In recent years, many solar gadgets have been developed for variety of applications. Because of excellent consistency quality, material processed in these units or gadgets can enjoy great market potential. Extremely low capital investment in this solar drying technology make it financially possible. The process of solar drying differs from the above mentioned other techniques by the way of heating of air by the, using the solar radiation. And you know the solar radiation is abundantly available to us, which is free of cost. You, you don't need to pay any uh, amount for using this solar energy. But, but the only thing is that you have to you have to use some proper technology by which you can utilize it. The heated air could be circulated naturally or by a by a ventilator powered by PV array or electricity. And drying is basically involves two phenomena, heat transfer and mass transfer. And we have seen that drying is a complicated process which involves various heat and mass transfer concepts. And we have discussed that in drying, in solar drying basically, the solar energy used to heat up the air. Solar dryers are predominantly used in agriculture industry to dry foods and storage purposes. There are direct and indirect type solar dryers and some mixed dryers are also there. We will discuss it in the, uh, maybe in the further lecture or in this lecture also. We have understand these two types of solar drying with the help of these two, two diagrams. The first one is the uh, direct solar dry and another second one is the indirect solar dry. In direct solar dry we can see this uh, with the help of this diagram we try to understand it. The direct drying system expose the product to the direct sunlight. The key processes here are heat transfer from the heating source. You can see here some uh, crop is there inside this direct solar dryer and the, <coughs> that is heated uh, by the source which, which is uh, a, a, a sun. Solar energy is falling uh, through this glass cover to the crop and in these systems the drying process is sometimes assisted by air flow which helps the transport moisture convect, convectively. The convection is, will take place and this moisture will, the, the, uh, will taken away by the air which is uh, flowing from the bottom. And you know that the hot air has a tendency to, to rise up in uh, up direction and hence the moisture content of this crop will go from the, uh, in, in the form of hot air from the top. And in uh, another one which is the indirect type solar dryer, Indirect type solar dryer use absorbing surface which heat the air which is further passed over the target product. So there is no direct contact of solar radiation with the product in the design. In indirect solar direct systems, it is easier to protect the agriculture product from external damage. That is since no direct heating is there. So if you, you can avoid the about the overheating of the material. So but these are uh, the components of the solar dryers basically. Uh, solar dryers will, uh, will have some uh, solar collector, solar air collector, air handling unit, unit and drying chamber. So solar air collector also called as the solar, solar air heaters are used to heat the ambient air. And this ambient air is being used uh, as the, is being used in the air handling unit to dry the product. There exist several designs of these solar air dryers, solar air heaters rather. The air handling unit, the air handling unit consists of blower and suitable duct work. 
the air handling unit takes heated air from the solar collector and sends it to the drying unit and we use to keep our uh, crop or food product in the drying chamber and the drying takes place basically in the drying unit where the heated air extracts the moisture from the product to be dried many uh, designs are available for the for this drying unit and here you can see in this sketch in this diagram the solar radiation basically falls in the solar collectors which is being heated and this hot air being be, is being handled by the air handling unit the hot air being passed to the drying chamber your your crop gets dried hai na jo, jo wet product will be there which gets dried and we end up with the humid air out and we can uh, classify the solar dryers uh, uh, as the drying by using the solar energy can be broadly classified as open sun drying and control drying open sun drying we have already discussed in detail in the previous lecture where uh, the product are spread in the open space in thin layer and exposed directly to the sun we have already discussed this process in details in previous lectures though this process is economical but have some disadvantages like open sun drying requires presence of somebody at the site throughout the drying period so that the product could be protected from birds animals and ad adverse weather conditions since your product is drying, drying in open sun is some rain for example if rain is there then someone uh, must be there to 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 save your crop the resulting dried products are not of very high quality because of ducts and other because of the ducts and other sediments present in the atmosphere the products are usually unhygienic since so dust are there where your product is in open space so it's not as much hygienic sun drying tends to be labor intensive also and has limited capacity temperature control is also difficult in this method and the product can easily be overheated causing crack crack grains which lead to the low milling quality it is also not possible to open sun dry at night or during the rain above a problems can be resolved by using controlled solar dryers and here in, in this classification you can see that controlled solar dryers we have two types of two types of modes of operation you can say passive mode and active mode and in this passive mode and active mode we have some greenhouse dryers and cabinet dryers so in this lecture we are mainly focus, focusing on the greenhouse dryers so we have seen how this greenhouse dryers are required how how, how why solar dryers are superior is as comparison with the open sun drying so greenhouse dryer uh, we are going to discuss uh, now greenhouse dryer is an enclosed structure having transparent walls and roofs made up of glass polythenes film etc here the product need to be dried is placed in the trays receiving the solar radiation through the plastic cover or glass and the moisture is removed by natural circulation or force circulation we are will discuss in the uh, in the further slide that two two modes of operation will be there one is natural circ convection and another is force convection and this technology improves the product quality and reduces the drying period also solar uh, greenhouse dryers are characterized by having extensive glazing on their south facing side you know that throughout the year if you measure the solar radiation the maximum solar radiation we found on the south facing sides while the other sides are well insulated insulation is required so that once the sun radiation which is falling on the roof of the greenhouse dryer enters in the dryer it is it is contracted inside your greenhouse some means are provided to store the daytime excess heat vents are strategically sized and positioned to control the airflow a well designed greenhouse dryer permits a greater degree of control over the drying process then the solar cabinet dryers solar cabinet dryers will discuss in the uh, maybe in the next uh, lecture and should be used where relatively large quantity of products is to be dried if uh, if you go for the industrial drying for example where the large amount of products need to be dried then we prefer this greenhouse dryers over any dryer any solar dryer like cabinet dryer then this solar greenhouse dryer is basically uh, work on the greenhouse effect so you some of you might be aware of this greenhouse effect that the greenhouse effect is a natural process that warms the earth surface when the sun's energy reaches the earth atmosphere some of this uh, incoming solar radiation is being reflected back to the space 
and rest is absorbed and re-radiated by greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases includes water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone and some artificial chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbon. You all know that uh, these are the like ACs and uh, freezes. These are the uh, equipments which emits this chlorofluorocarbon gases and some of you have heard that the ozone layer is depleting because of these harmful gases. The absorbed energy warms the atmosphere and the surface of the earth. This process maintains the earth's temperature at around 33 degrees Celsius, warmer than it could otherwise be, allowing the life on, on the earth. So in this diagram, uh, we have just uh, tried to explain this, the process of uh, how this greenhouse effect occurs. And this greenhouse effect is basically the, the principle behind the greenhouse greenhouse dryer. So there are these are the steps why the greenhouse effect occurs. In step one, solar radiation reaches the earth atmosphere. Some of this is reflected back into the space. And in step two, these steps are being shown here in this diagram. In step two, the rest of the sun's energy is absorbed by the land and the oceans hitting the earth. In step three, heat radiates from earth towards the space. In step four, some of this heat is trapped by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, keeping the earth warm enough to sustain life here. Step five, human activities such as burning fossil fuels, agriculture and land clearing are increasing the amount of greenhouse gases. You know that carbon dioxide, especially the carbon dioxide, which is the very, very harmful and polluting gas, uh, it, it is increasing the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere. And in the stage six, it is trapped extra heat and causing the earth atmosphere to rise, the temperature of the earth atmosphere to rise. And uh, on this principle, the greenhouse dryer works and the crops are generally spread on the tray of dryer where they receive short wavelength solar energy during a major part of the day and also natural air circulation. The solar plate is placed with which contain aluminum meshing sheet which collects the heat from the sun. The absorbed radiation is converted into thermal energy and the temperature of the materials starts to increase. The long wave radiation from the surface of the crop <coughs> to the ambient air through moist air and also convective heat due to the blowing wind through moist air over the crop surface. The moisture is taken away by the air entering into the greenhouse from below and escaping through at the top exit way in the dryer. Of the total solar radiation impinging on the tray cover, a part of the reflected, a part is reflected back to the atmosphere and remaining is transmitted in the greenhouse. The part of transmitted radiation is then absorbed by the surface of the crop which causes its temperature to increase and thereby emit long wave wavelength radiations which are not allowing to escape to atmosphere due to the green poly cover or glass cover. The overall phenomena causes the temperature above the crop inside the dryer to be higher. The greenhouse poly cover in this, in the, in this serves in reducing the direct convective loss to the ambient which plays an important role in increasing the crop and inside dryer temperature. So these, uh, these are the classification of the uh, greenhouse dryers. There are some basis on which we try to classify these greenhouse dryers and first is on the basis of the airflow. There are two types of airflow may be there, a natural convection or force convection. Natural convection is sometimes also called as the passive mode of heating and the force convection is called as the active mode of heating. In a passive solar dryer, air is heated and circulated naturally or by buoyancy or as a result of wind pressure in a, or in a combination of for both. Here the food crop need to be dried or placed inside the greenhouse. We can, you can see here in this diagram also that the, your crop is placed inside the greenhouse with canopy cover. The air from the bottom of the greenhouse enters into it. Air gets heated by the solar energy because due to the greenhouse effect, the temperature inside the greenhouse increases. The hot air goes up because of the buoyancy and the moisture contained with the crop go out with the air and the crop gets dried. And in second, that is the active or force convection here you can see. In active dryer, air is heated and circulated with the help of the fan 
placed at the top of the greenhouse. Here the food crop need to be dried or placed inside the greenhouse with canopy cover. The air from the bottom will enter into the greenhouse. The air gets heated and it will extract the heat content of the your crop. But here we use a fan may be operated by the solar energy on the top and with the help of this fan we we just made this uh, greenhouse active so we, we you can compare uh, these two dryers uh, passive and active that is the advantage of this passive dryer are the same it, it is simple to design and low installation and operation cost but the limit, limitation is the, the capacity per unit area of dryer is limited whereas in force uh, convection uh, solar dryers that is also known as the active dryers the high dry rate compared to the passive dryers that the rate will be faster here because you you are using a fan to extract the heat from the surface from the surface of your crop and high dry rate compared with the, uh, to the uh, passive dryers can be used for higher products higher produce and but the limitation is that more complex and expensive than the passive dryers so on the basis of this uh, advantage and limitations we we can decide that for our applications which dryer will be suitable and another very important dryer which is called is the hybrid photovoltaic thermal pbt integrated greenhouse dryer here the fan which is used in the active dryers are being operated by the pb module uh, installed at the roof of this greenhouse dryer this can be seen in this diagram also so uh, we can also classify the solar greenhouse dryer on the basis of the covering material we can use polythene we can use polycarbonate sheet covered we can use glass cover and on the basis of structure even span roof type parabolic shaped on the basis of floor you can also classify this solar greenhouse dryers like if you use concrete floor we can, you can use pvc sheet floor we can use rock bed or stand stand floor so uh, the idea of the greenhouse dryer is to replace the function of solar collector by the greenhouse system uh, the design properly greenhouse dryer allow a greater degree of control over the drying process than the cabinet dryers and they are more appropriate for large scale applications then uh, we can have natural uh, convection greenhouse dryer here in this diagram you can see that it is clear that uh, this dryer consists of two parallel row of drying platforms along the long side of galvanized iron wire mesh surface laid over the wooden beams a fixed slanted glass roof over the platform allows the solar radiation to fall over the product you can see here in this diagram the dryer aligned lengthwise in the north south axis had black coated internal walls uh, improved absorption of solar radiation a ridge cap made of folded zinc sheet over the roof provided an air exit vent shutters are also at the outer surface outer side of the platform regulated the air inlet so uh, another type of uh, solar greenhouse dryer is a natural convection greenhouse dryer the diagram is uh, being shown here uh, the earliest form of practically realized natural circulation greenhouse dryers reported was the brace research institute glass roof solar dryer the dry is uh, dryer is shown in the, in this figure from figure it is clear that this dryer consists of two parallel rows of drying platforms along the long side of galvanized iron wire mesh surface and laid over wooden beams a fixed slanted glass roof over the platform allowed solar energy to fall cover the product over the product the dryer aligned lengthwise in the north south axis had black coated internal walls for improved absorption of solar energy because you know that the black surface absorbs more solar energy the ridge cap made a folded zinc sheet over the roof provides an air exit vent shutters at the outer sides of the platforms regulated the air inlet and another type of uh, greenhouse dryer is the natural uh, convection greenhouse dryer with chimney a simplified design of the typical greenhouse type solar uh, natural circulation solar dryer consists of a transparent semi cylindrical drying chamber with an attached cylindrical chimney rising vertically out of one end while the other end is equipped with a door for air inlet and access to the drying chamber if you want to uh, put your crop in the drying then you can enter uh, from this side the chimney 
has maximum possible height of 3 meter above the chamber and diameter of 1.64 meter. It is the design parameter for this natural convection greenhouse diameter chimney. The drying chamber was a modified and augmented version of a commercially available poly uh, uh, tunnel type greenhouse. The dryer operates by the action of solar energy impinged direct on the crop <coughs> within the dryer. The crop and the vertically huge black absorbing curtain within the chimney absorbs the solar radiation and the and it warms the, the crop. The surrounding air is in turn heated as this heated air rise and flows of the chimney to the consist of the dryer. Fresh replenishing air is drawn in from the other end of the dryer and your crop gets dried. So, uh, these are some of the advantages of this greenhouse dryer. The advantage of the greenhouse dryer, you know that it uses the renewable energy and greenhouse dryers are the better quality product than the open sun dryer. Also, the greenhouse dryer reduces the moisture content in a very less time uh, compared to the open sun drying. It has also advantage that the materials to be dried is protected from the dust and rain. So, in this lecture, we have discussed the uh, why these greenhouse dryers are much much more important in comparison to the open open sun drying. And we have discussed different types of uh, solar uh, greenhouse dryers, different modes of greenhouse dryers. We have classified the uh, solar greenhouse dryers on the uh, on different basis like uh, whether the uh, cover may be different or modes of operation will be different. So, uh, this thing we have uh, discussed in this lecture. Uh, thank you very much.